What's going on guys and welcome back. As you can see, I am in uh, shorts, Crocs, and a t-shirt. It is 78 degrees out today. So I figured this would be the perfect time and place to talk about summarizing sleds. And I did a video on this last year, um, but I'm gonna do another one on it this year and kind of touch on a couple other things that I've seen throughout the year of people saying, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. You can't do this, can't do that. So um, as always, I you know kind of put my head together with Bruce. Bruce even made a couple calls to engineers at Player. So we have a couple little insight things here um, that, some people are probably going to agree with and some people are going to disagree with. So it doesn't really matter. This is just our opinion on what kind of should be done to the sled. Now, I've already done most of this stuff, but we're just getting to this video now. So here is good old Rhonda Burgundy. She's already washed, which is my first Knox. What are you eating? Which is my first order of business, really clean these things clean them they took you wherever you wanted to go in the winter time and i've touched on this a million other times clean these things i am a big advocate of keeping everything extremely clean i'm also a big advocate of simple green i think simple green is great it doesn't hurt anything but it still works well it helps get you know a lot of the grease off everything like that get in the engine the engine bay the outside clean it make it like it's your living room clean that thing you know that is really the main step i've seen so many sleds where they're just absolutely disgusting and i'm like what do people do to these things so definitely clean that would be our number one once you are all done cleaning and it's dried off grease the rear suspension now the only greasable spots on these sleds is in your rear arm so you have one down there i don't even know if i'm gonna be able to get to these where's the other one one right there and then I believe there's one up here. I could even be wrong. That might be the only two. Oh no. And there's one right. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. It's right at the bottom of that rear shock. And that's your only three greasable spots on here. So pretty much greasing is obviously going to lube it, but after you get done cleaning, it's going to push out all the water. So you don't want water sitting in there because everything's just going to corrode over, you know, the summertime. So grease it, push all the water out, and then wipe all the excess grease off just because you don't want more dirt getting stuck to it. What is next? I got a little cheat sheet here. So this is something that actually my father taught me many, many moons ago, and that was WD-40. WD-40 is your friend, um, just keeps everything... Um, from pitting or rusting or anything like that, especially if you're keeping these sleds in a in a spot that goes through a lot of heat changes, you know, hot, cold, hot, cold, and everything's sweating, you're definitely going to want to do it. So what I do, especially for my dad's stuff that sits in the trailers and stuff, especially a black trailer, I will WD-40 the entire engine bay, um, really soak it in there. I do the entire rear skid. I do the front control arms. Anything that you could see. Um, Yes, it's going to attract a little bit of dust, but it's going to keep it, you know, clean. Not, I don't want to say clean because you could just hose it off at the end of the year, but it's going to keep it lubricated. And I, I'm drawing a blank on the word, and when I'm editing this, I'll throw in the correct word across the bottom. But I am a big advocate of WD-40. So you clean it, you grease it, you WD-40 it. Then what do you do? And this is kind of – and this is going to be out of order because we're going to get into the whole the fuel thing and the fuel stabilizer and fogging and everything here in a little bit. But um, you're going to want to take your belt off your clutches. Why do you want to do that? So pretty much if you let that belt sit, um, really it's only going to be compressed on the secondary. But if any water gets down in there or any dirt or salt or anything, and it just sits there and it doesn't move, it could actually etch the inside of your primary. And it's going to, you know, it's going to make it not a smooth service, which is really just going to excessive belt wear next year or uh, belt failure next year. It could be a lot of things. So just, you know, use your spanner wrench, pull your belt off, put it in a nice dry place, you know, and it's also not going to sit in that, that same shape. So, you know, every once in a while, wherever you do store it, just go around and move it. You know, it's just, uh, 
this is just little things that you guys you know can look out for so clean it grease it wd-40 take your belt off and this is what this is where we're going to get into good stuff so i bruce actually again reached out to an engineer that is uh someone that he's dealt with for many years now over at polaris and said hey people that are storing their sleds for the summertime just one year do they need to fog it and he said actually you don't now again this is just an opinion can you do it yes you could absolutely do it is it going to hurt anything maybe not you might just eat a set of plugs next year when you fire it up and you're burning all that excess oil out but he said for year to year summarization it is not something that is 100 percent needed and i know that's crazy because Polaris released a video of him saying you know do the fogging but he said honestly if you're going to leave it sit for two three four years then yes he definitely recommends the fogging but he said it's not 100 percent needed he said the biggest thing really is if you guys have you know non-ethanol which that's the only thing that i run in my sled is non-ethanol so he said non-ethanol is a big thing obviously because you don't want ethanol because then it's going to get you know the fuel is going to go bad quicker and it's going to gum everything up um, so obviously non-ethanol and he said, and the really good thing is Polaris carbon clean. And me and Bruce were like, what carbon clean? So we looked it up and it's actually a fuel stabilizer and it keeps, it helps keep the, whatever goes on in fuel, it helps it keep it good is for layman's terms. So he said, put some carbon clean, let it run for a while, obviously before you put it away. He said, and you should be good. So obviously the fogging thing. And that's the biggest thing that I saw this year was, well, what? You know, do we need to do it? And a lot of people, yeah, 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 fogging's the best, fogging's the best. And again, it's not a bad thing, but right from the engineer at Polaris, it is not needed. So, I mean, that's really it. And, oh, try not to keep it in direct sunlight. So I know not everyone has a shop or a trailer or anything like that, but if you are keeping it outside, one, I definitely recommend the WD-40 at that point, um, just because it's going to be, you know, moisture driven. But try not to keep it in direct sunlight. Uh, it just, you know, wears on the paint, wears on the plastic, wears on everything. So if you guys do have to keep it outside, try and keep it undercover. Try and, you know, I don't know if you could build a little shed to, to sit it under or, you know, a cover or anything. Just try and keep it out of direct sunlight. Uh, it's really a killer for these things. And that's not what we want. But as for summarization, guys, that's, those are the big topics. Um, some guys loosen their tracks. Some guys say, you know, take the suspension off, which not off, but, you know, keep it up in the air. You could keep it on the ground. Just go and cycle. You know, if, you, if it's sitting on the ground, go and push in the suspension every now and then just so the shocks move, the you know, the torsion bars move, the springs move. Just keep all that flu, you know, fluid moving. And, uh, you know, that's really going to do it for that. I am going to do, and this is going to kind of lead me into another video because this is just summarization stuff. This is not necessarily summer maintenance. This is just summarization of how to store the sled. Um, I am gonna do another video on summer maintenance. So whether that be shock work, whether that be clutch work, whether that be, uh, well, that's really the two big things, um, but slides or high facts, bearings, I, that's another thing. Jack shaft bearings, huge topic in the Polaris world. Um, I am going to do a video on how to grease them and what to check for. I got to get with Bruce on that. I've never had a failure. Bruce has only seen one or two in all of his time, um, which is crazy because of how many sleds he sees, you know, come through the door each year. But we are going to touch on that. I am going to go through it. I am going to let you guys know the, you know, the, what we know, which again, we haven't seen much of it, but we're going to do as much as we can. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it, guys. So, I mean, just stay tuned. We're going to have a bunch of stuff coming here. I uh, I made, and you guys know we did a ton of shock work on this. I made a very, very simple thing to make you guys be able to get your shocks done. It's just, I, that's all I could say right now. But it's coming. That'll probably be the next video because I want to get that out there in case you guys want to jump on board with this. And uh you know, get your stuff ready for our 2022-23 season, which is insane. I really can't believe it's 78 degrees already, but here we are. Um, unfortunately, the season is 100% done now, and uh, I have switched over to summer mode. So I'm getting boats ready and 
shore house ready and we'll be on the water here before we know it. So guys, that's going to do it. I got to, uh, yeah, that just goes to show you how hot it is. Nash is breathing heavy. Knox, what are you eating? But that's going to do it, guys. I hope this helps. If you have any questions or comments, you know, put them down in the comments. I'm always, always going to get back to you guys. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.